the longevity escape velocity. Um, so, you know, the idea that, you know, average age goes on one year for every year. What is your thinking on the longevity escape velocity? Do you think we will reach it or have we reached it already? Yeah, well, so we, we are getting closer and closer every day. Uh, so we already now, uh, we already know for now that every 10 years, lifespan increases with about 2.5 years. Um, or put differently, every four days or so, you have one day extra of, of lifespan. Um, and that's, in, that's at least the, the, the trend we have seen in the last decades. Uh, the, this question, will it still continue? Because last decades, we had a lot of improvements in hygiene and medicine and vaccines and so on that contributed to that longer lifespan. And uh, some scientists, of course, say there is a plateau. And there, of course, there is very likely there is a plateau, a biological plateau of about 120 years for our species. Uh, and uh, no matter how healthy you eat or live, uh, yeah, you won't be able to go through that plateau uh, because it's genetically, uh, let's say, programmed that, that that's the maximum lifespan. Um, but I think with the new technologies, uh, biotechnologies we currently see in development, that's possible to break through that plateau, uh, to break through that ceiling and really yeah, further extend lifespan uh, uh, to perhaps 150 years, 200 years, uh, mainly not by slowing down aging, but by actually reversing aging, uh, so making old organisms younger again. And we have seen in recent studies that it's, it's possible uh, to achieve that. Uh, so uh, we have seen studies where you have old mice uh, with the gray fur and bald spots and cognitive decline and reduced or organ regeneration. And these mice are epigenetically reprogrammed or their senescent cells are cleared and they look young again, or at least younger again. Uh, so the gray fur is shiny black again, bald spots have disappeared, their uh, osteoporotic backs have improved, their cognition is improved, their, their organs regenerate better, etc. So that's more the goal of biogerontology and of, of uh, the, bio, the science behind uh, aging is not just to slow down, but actually reverse aging. And that way you, yeah, you could really theoretically uh, punch through that ceiling, that biological ceiling of 120 years and uh, reach much, much higher lifespans. And some scientists or philosophers speculate that we will go to a future where people become ageless. Uh, so they will perhaps be 150 years old and they look uh, like 40 years old or 30 years old, uh, or at least people looking at who are 90 years old and still look 40. Uh. So that's why I think we will uh, push through that plateau of 120 years and, uh, and become, uh, yeah, I think that's a likely scenario where we will perhaps go to an ageless society where people don't look their age anymore. And um, uh, some people would will like that. Uh, a lot of, I think a lot of people want to look young uh, and healthy as long as possible. Some people uh, won't like that, but I think we will go there uh, to that kind of future anyhow. If you look at the biological developments, um, uh, I think it's very likely billions of dollars are being invested in treatments to reverse aging. Uh, and actually, we will, there are another reason why we will get there is because um, the best way to treat aging related diseases is by uh, slowing down and reversing aging. So uh, I think if you want to properly treat heart disease or Alzheimer's disease, there will, the best treatments will be the ones that do that, but simultaneously also reverse or substantially slow down your aging process. Um, um, yeah, so I think that's, that's a, a possible uh, future we are going to. Some scientists uh, even believe that the first human who will become 500 years old uh, is already born, uh, or some investors believe that. Uh, remains to be seen, uh, but I do believe we will go to a future where people uh, will live uh, to, much, uh, to a much higher age in much better health than uh, uh, was ever possible in, in the history of mankind. Looking at the Longevity X Prize, so you're also on the board of the, or the advisory group of the Longevity X Prize. So what can you share about where that's going at the moment? Yeah, the, the Longevity X Prize would be a prize for uh, the first team that can uh, uh, impact the aging process in a very significant way. Uh, it will be a million dollar prize. Um, um, I can't say yet too much about it, but uh, uh, it's something that's uh, in, in the works. 
Uh, and the, the X prizes have been very uh, important to really move forward specific causes. A uh, famous example is uh, the current space race we see. Um, so it was all started with an X prize many years ago for the first team that could launch a rocket into space and make it land back on Earth. And that uh, induced, uh, let's say, a lot of companies to really tackle this problem. And, uh, and we, see, uh, we, we have seen great outcomes of that. Uh, so now we see companies like uh, SpaceX, uh, SpaceX and, and, and so on that really have these, uh, these reusable rockets and, and they can uh, launch uh, cargo into space uh, many fold cheaper than, uh, than NASA is able to do and so on. So um, the X prizes have been paramount in, in solving big human challenges and problems. And this will, uh, we will also uh, see an X prize for our longevity. So that's, uh, uh, and I think it's important we have this to really first create awareness that the best way to keep people healthy is not by trying to treat individual aging related diseases, like trying to find a cure for heart disease or to find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Because even if you would cure heart disease, people will still die a few years later of another aging related disease. They will die of cancer or Alzheimer. Or if you cure Alzheimer's disease, people will die a year later of heart disease. So therefore it's so important to really target aging itself because that's, that causes all those diseases. Um, and I think an X prize can be paramount uh, to create that awareness uh, also among scientists and medical doctors, uh, especially because uh, a lot of scientists and medical doctors are not trained in aging. Uh, they consider aging as a natural process, uh, while all these diseases that medical doctors try to treat, like heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer, uh, they call it diseases, uh, something unnatural. But actually aging and those diseases are, are two sides of the same coin. And, uh, um, and I think doctors should be more trained in how aging happens, why it happens, not just DNA damage, it's much more complicated. And, uh, and to, so that they can realize that the best way to treat those diseases and prevent those diseases is by uh, treating aging itself. So uh, XPRIZE, the XPRIZE want uh, to bring that awareness to the world and really incentivize um, researchers and scientists uh, to look into aging and not just in trying to treat a tiny aspect of an aging related disease uh, as currently happens in, in most medical and uh, pharmaceutical and biotech research.